Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you what is HTML. HTML is an important language for the web page development. It is not like any kind of languages that you are going to use this to communicate with other people, but we are going to use this language to have interactions between human and computer. Obviously, it abbreviation HTML actually is taken from the first letter of each word of hypotext markup language. Since it is a hypotext language, this means that HTML can do many things for you. It contains not only text that I mentioned earlier, but also pictures, links, audios, videos, and other contents. But the most basic thing that you need to understand HTML is the HTML element most of which are wrapped by a pair of starting text and ending text. In between those texts is for you to write your patch contents. So this text is to make requests to the browser, then the browser will display the contents. And normally the HTML elements it end with angle bracket, it looks like this. But just for your information, actually there are some texts that don't need a closing text, such as uh, horizontal rule, uh, which is one of the example, is that allow you to create a line look like this uh, in your web page, and these are called self closing text. If you need to write something or modify the contents, then the opening text and closing text are compulsory. From the HTML element, we can put attribute to the element which allow you to bring some modifications to the element. Uh, this elements will display by default without modifications uh, for sure, and it is good to be familiar with the HTML element and the attribute. Uh, but always remember that attributes always come after the HTML element but most of the attributes of the elements are it look like this name equal to value and a single space should be applied to separate attributes and label name and the attribute must be written in the opening text of the HTML elements and no attribute is allowed in the closing text so now I'm going to show you how it works let's say I would like to modify the the color let's see once I update the attribute to the element I refresh again in the browser the browser display the hash r element again and we notice that the latest link look completely different with the original line so this is all you need to know about the connections between element and attribute which allow you to specify modifications to the default elements Next, we have to look at uh, HTML structure. Uh, just for your information, a standard HTML document contains a document type declarations and a structure tree. Firstly, we need to declare documents with a document type declarations. The main functions of this tag is to tell the browser that this is HTML document. So after the document type keyword, you need to write HTML. Well, we have just done the document declarations. So we already tell the system that this is HTML file. Secondly, we look at the HTML text. This tag is for you to put all the information of the web page. You cannot write a code behind or uh, how to say, you cannot write the code before the HTML opening text or after the HTML closing text. Now we look, take a look of the head tag. We can put some property on external link to build connections between the documents. And we have meta text, stand for metadata, which is a self closing text also. But it is optional, means that include this tag or not is completely up to you Be because whatever you put inside this meta text will not bring any effect to the appearance of your web page so you don't get confused when you see someone have written this keyword in head text let's take a look of first attributes uh, name it could be any text you want to put but 
we just try to make it short and only put uh, some important keyword or descriptions which only related to the documents. Usually these keywords are used by the search engine while indexing your web page for search purpose. Therefore, if your web page is related to, let's say, IT education institution, then you have to include the keyword such as, let's say, Java, Python, C++. These are some famous programming languages that offer by your education institution. So now we have done the part of keyword. Next, we, what we have to do, we have to have some more educational information about your document. Uh, we have to specify it again by adding a description. So we try to make it short and simple as well. Let's say free course for software engineering. Now we have both keyword and description. We put all these informations because we want people to search for it and get useful information from your web page. If you're looking for a free course for software engineering, then you might search the web page with some keyword. Uh, when you click the search button, your request is sent and the search engine will be activated and start searching for hundreds or thousands of web pages that are most likely related to what you're searching for. and finally display all the results in your browser. For example, if you want to learn how to cook chicken, let's say, then you properly search for how to cook chicken or chicken cooking recipe. This kind of keyword, uh, but not searching for how to cook fish or how to cook vegetable. This kind of keyword will only lead you to not get what you really want from the search engine. Although you will still get the result, but all results displayed in the browser are completely not related to what you are looking for. So apart from keyword and descriptions, we have author, uh, HTTP, equivalence, and viewpoint. For author, I don't think I need to explain it more about it because this attribute just to express by the author of the documents. If you are Johns, then you just write Johns. Uh, it doesn't matter. Next, we, we have a look about the attribute called HTTP equivalence. This attribute allows you to specify durations for your web page to keep refresh. It means the values are named of particular HTTP header. Let's we have a look at one by one. First, we have meta refresh. You can set a number of seconds until the web page should be reloaded. Usually, we refresh the web page in order to make the data or information to always keep up to date when some specific contents has been updated or you want to link the old web page to another web page for reasons. And for example, I want the current date and times to be displayed in the browser, so I use JavaScript to get the current date and time. And still, it doesn't matter if you don't understand the JavaScript because I just want to show you how refresh tag is going to work in the browser. Now realize with only JavaScript, the time is static, but you need to see the current date at times for after let's say every seven seconds. So we need to put an integer value which is seven, means seven seconds. You can only assign positive integer value but not uh, any negative integer value because we can only reload a new patch instead of draw back the old web page. Because reloading or redirecting web page can let people get the latest information. Now we save the file and refresh again in the browser and wait for a 7 second patiently. And you see the web page is freshing, means it is reloading. Then only you check the date and times again. The date is same, but times is changed to latest or current times for every second second. 
In special situations, you might need to redirect the user to the target patch, especially you just want to uh, deliver some short but some important information to the user before taking them to your web patch. You can redirect users and search engine to different value UI address and redirections is as simple as adding a valid URL address after the indigenous value separated with a semicolon. Now we need to define a valid URL address. Let's say URL equals to HTTP as a, let's say www.google.com. Now we go back to the hash to tag. We remove the original text and replace with a welcome message, which is welcome to this education platform. Now I put a break line text and follow my reminder message, which is beware of scammer. But as a sign of respect, you should inform the users that this patch will be redirected to another target patch. So we have to uh, use the break line again and we write, you will be read directed to our patch in 7 seconds. Usually we don't fix the time limit as long as the user has enough time to read it and try to avoid the redirections to be happens too quickly like shorter than 2 seconds. This causes the user almost I think impossible to read your important message. So in this case I think 7 seconds is I think good enough or sufficient to get user intentions to read the message. Also, you can change the integer's value to zero to redirect the URL address immediately. This sort of thing is completely depending on the contents of your web page. If you have set up a refresh tag and redirection is not working, please check the refreshing text and the valid URL address because you might get error. And if redirection is compulsory, I personally suggest you to add one more contents in order to ensure the user can still redirect to the target patch successfully by clicking the provided link manually if redirections is failure due to let's say certain issue if you are not redirected in seven seconds please click here now we assign a hyperlink to the text here with We use the same URL address, which is www.google.com. So now this this tag here is now become a hypertext, or now become a hyperlink. This hyperlink is an seems like an alternative for the user to access to your web page. Last but not least, try to avoid using too much the data refresh text because there is a possibility to be detected as a web page with content possible spam and re will remove it from the index this video is uh, more than 10 minutes i think i just end this video here and we continue the meta tech in the next video and also at the end of this tutorial i hope you can at least understand the structure of html a meta text refresh uh, something like that so see you again in the next video